Hello everyone, this is Sir Gantlot again, back with another video in the series to help you prepare for your PMP, Project Management Professional Exam. This time I want to explain how something called the point of total assumption is calculated and what it means. And you might have come across this when you've been studying um, project procurement management from the PMBOK or in preparation for your exam in some other way. And this concept is relatively new and it is associated with fixed price incentive fee contracts. Okay, well I mentioned that you would study this in project procurement management. So what do we mean by procurement? Well, to procure means to acquire. So in a project context, procurement means acquiring goods, services, supplies, or any other items that you need on your project but do not have. So therefore you'll be acquiring them from outside the project or even outside of your entire organization, most likely in fact outside of your organization. And the most common way that we procure is through contracts. And so sometimes people just loosely refer to procurement as contracting. Now the point about contracting or putting in place contracts is that you are transferring risk. Risk is being transferred or redistributed between a buyer and a seller. Now remember of course the contract is a legally binding agreement between two parties. One party is providing goods or services and the other party is receiving them and typically paying in some way either monetarily with money or possibly with some other reciprocal services or some other form of payment in kind. Now in a contractual agreement there is some risk or uncertainty for both parties. Uh, the seller might have some uncertainty about whether or not they can make a profit. The buyer might have some uncertainty about uh, the eventual price or potentially about the quality of what might be delivered. Now as explained in one of my other videos, risk can be both positive and negative. Risks can be opportunities as well as threats, as most people think of them. But which party has what type of risk depends on what type of contract is being put in place. Uh, there are fixed price type contracts, cost plus type contracts, there are also unit price contracts, and each of those types can be modified to slightly uh, change who has the greatest risk. Now one emerging favoured type of contract for some organisations is something called a fixed price incentive fee contract with some specific modifications. Firstly, a ceiling price will be set. And secondly, even though it's fixed price, it's based on a fair estimate of how much the vendor will incur in costs to do the work for you. Now it is just an estimate, so therefore the cost might be different. So typically uh, the buyer and seller agree how cost overruns and underruns will be handled, and we'll see this in practice in just a moment. As a result of doing all of that, you can calculate something called a point of total assumption. So let's look at how that's calculated first, then we'll talk about what it means in practice. So let's use as an example, um, let's say you're a project manager for a project to repave the runway on a small provincial airport. And you've already selected the paving contractor that's going to do the work, but now you want to have some hard negotiation about the uh, price, uh, profit levels, and so on. So let's say, for example, that you've asked the vendor to say, OK, as honestly as you can, what do you think the cost to you, vendor, driving, uh, driveway and uh, runway paving contract will be to pave that uh, airport? What will it cost you? And they say the best estimate that we can uh, give you based on previous similar work is a million dollars. And you say, okay, now we're thinking of paying you a fee on top of that to represent your profit. Now, of course, that will be negotiated extensively, but let's say you agree that $100,000 seems reasonable. Both parties are happy with that. That means that you've agreed a target price, which is $1,100,000. But just to protect you as the buyer, 
you agree a ceiling and you say, look, this is not going to go above 1,400,000. Even if those costs do escalate beyond what you estimate, we will not pay more than 1,400,000. Having done that, you revisit the costs and you say, you know what, there's always a possibility that the costs might overrun. But if they do, we, the buyer, we're only going to pay you 85 cents on the dollar or 85 pence on the pound. You're going to have to pick up the remaining 15% of the cost overruns. And of course, those would be negotiated, that split. But let's say we eventually settle on that. But we also agree what we'll do in the case that the costs are less. If the vendor, the contractor, manages to get it done for 900000 for instance, you agree that that saving you'll split between you. So basically, they would get 950000 and you'd benefit to the tune of uh, 50000 as well. Now, with those agreements there, you can calculate something called the point of total assumption. In this case, it would be the number you see right there. But how is that calculated? Well, let's see how it's calculated and we'll talk about the implications of that. It's a fairly simple formula to calculate PTA, point of total assumption. It's the ceiling price minus the target price divided by the buyer share for overruns plus the target costs. So there's a subtraction, a division, and an addition. If we plug in the numbers from the example on the previous page that we were looking at, that would be 1,400,000 minus 1,100,000. That is $300,000. Divide that by, and notice, divide by 0.85, and then add a million to that. What you get is 1,352,000. Nine hundred forty one. It's important to remember to divide by the point eight five, not multiplied by it. So, as we saw before, the point of total assumption in this example one million three hundred fifty two thousand nine hundred and forty one. Fair enough, big deal. What does all that mean? Well, this is what the point of total assumption means in practice. Firstly, up to the target cost the uh, seller is fully profitable. Above the target cost, if the costs go above a million in our example, the seller gets reasonable payment against additional costs. And of course, they still get their full target fee, the profit, that 100,000. However, at the point of total assumption and beyond, the seller has to pay all of the cost overruns, and therefore they start to cut into their profits. And if costs keep rising far enough, they'll start to operate at a loss. Uh, the other way of looking at the PTA is effectively at the PTA, the buyer's ceiling has been hit. So therefore, as we said before, above the PTA, the buyer is paying none of the cost overruns. They're the entire and full responsibility of the uh, vendor to cover. Okay, so that was... Uh, uh, a quick pass through the point of total assumption. Uh, I do have some other videos available on YouTube. You might want to take a look at those to cover things like uh, critical path analysis, earned value management, and so on. Uh, I recently developed a rapid rollout methodology where organizations can quickly deploy project risk management. Uh, there's a handbook that you can get hold of for that. And uh, a license to use that methodology is implied by owning the handbook. Uh, you can get it from some of the typical outlets there, either in paperback or in uh, ebook format. Uh, soon, I'm hoping to launch uh, live training sessions uh, at client sites and public enrollment uh, training classes, and also offering online training. So stay tuned for those. I'll uh, maybe if you subscribe to my YouTube videos, you'll get notified when those happen. Uh, I'm also associated with this organisation here, Westall Murray International. Uh, from the consulting line of the business. So if you need support for project or project risk management, uh, consulting or more broadly training, feel free to check those uh, guys out as, as well. So again, thanks for listening and uh, I hope you find this video and others uh, in the series of help to you.